Hi, everybody. I know I've been delving into pastels and other things too, but I miss my pouring and I need to, I've got a bunch of pours that I need to embellish, but today I'm going to do some pouring projects that are going to be meant to be embellished by something in the future. Um, I'm also in the next few days going to try out some of these things that other people have, I've seen have been doing like, uh, the marble pours where you're rolling a marble around through to make great patterns and and some of the pours that are just blowouts without any flow trawl or anything like that just paint and water thinned with water um so i'm going to be doing a few of those in future but today i'm going to be doing a swipe that I'm intending to turn, I belong to a group called Greener Pastures Beyond the Poor. It's wonderful. It's on Facebook. Um, it's a wonderful group. And one of the main reasons I haven't ditched Facebook yet, to be honest. Um, but it's really good and I love it. And people, it, it's basically just for people who like to embellish their pores or like to look at pores that have been embellished by other people. You're not, um... That's not one of the groups where you just show your pour unless it's in a thread asking for help as to how to embellish it. So it's really a fun group and it's really inspiring. And the June challenge is actually windows and doors. So I'm going to make an attempt to do a pour and swipe that will give me the cells I want to create like a, an older stone, gray stone wall. Um, so hopefully it will turn out the way I want it to. I'm using, I have, since I haven't been doing this for a while, I have my paint already mixed with Floetrol, but none of the, none of my, I don't keep silicone in these things. So I'm only going to be putting a cell maker in that. And the rest of these, though, since they've been sitting for a while, I have added some water to just to thin them out a little bit more. They, they'll they last for a long time in these containers, but they do thicken up over time. So you just want to reconstitute them a little bit. And the only silicone that I use is OGX Coconut Milk Serum, hair serum. Good for your hair, good for your lungs, because I don't like to breathe in chemicals and silicone. This smells like coconut at least, so. Um, I mean, I wouldn't opt for breathing this in either. I've had this for the entire time I've been pouring, which is three years now. And this, I still have half a bottle of it left. So, so anyway, it's good stuff. I'm just going to put a few drops in there. You less, a little goes a long way, but since this is such a huge sour cream container, I like to recycle everything. And I just put my stir stick away. I'm going to go ahead and stir it anyway. I'm using an old chopstick. I'm going to stir that silicone down into there. This is pretty thick, so I'm going to throw some water in too. I don't usually stir silicone up a lot. It doesn't need it, but since this is such a big container, I'm going to let it get all down in there. So what I'm going to do is use this black as my swiper, my swiping medium. And I'm going to probably pull a swipe down with a paper towel, though I'm not quite sure. I might use um, some little cardboard pieces. I have some old paint swatches and cut up pieces of cardboard and these make decent swiping tools so I'll probably use those I'm feeling a little rusty being in front of you again <laughs> but anyway that's my plan today is to and I'm making sure always want to make sure that your canvas is level I'm not using tacks because my little um, thing has ridges on it. My poor thing. This is actually a washing machine drain pan um, and it works great. 
to catch pores. Plus, when you want to get paint skins or things to make multimedia projects, they peel right up off of here. So I have another video that I'm going to put out in a few days of me just peeling paint and, <laughs> and storing it. Um, some people like to watch that. It's kind of an ASMR kind of experience. Anyway, watch and paint peel. Who'd have thought it was really a thing? All right. These flushable wipes were dry, but I just put some water in them, reconstitute them for my purposes. I'm going to leave that in there for now, though. All right. So these little things over here are old silicone. I, I get these containers at the Dollar Tree, and any paints that I mix silicone in, I put in these little containers, but we're not going to use those for this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have a little metallic black, I have silver, all these are mixed with Floetrol. I've, I've had to replace this, my, my lid exploded, so I don't have the name written on the side. This is just white, kind of a emerald green color. And I'm only gonna use a tiny bit of this just to kind of indicate a little moss or stuff in the cells. And a little bit of blue, because when you put blue with silver, and black and white, and again, only just a little bit, it, it kind of helps with shadows. When you look at a photo of a gray building or a gray animal, you see a lot of blue, usually, if it's cool gray, and sometimes you see a little brown if it's if it's a warmer color. So, so when you paint what you see, sometimes, you know? Okay, so I'm just gonna get started by, oh, that was not, there's a little water in that thing I shook up. Good thing I'm... I shook them up, but I guess there's a little water left in the tops. Maybe I better check that with the rest of my paints. The silver is good. The white is good. Just pouring little droplets of it over here to make sure there's no more water hanging up the tips of those paints. All right, now we got it. Goodness. All right, so just a little metallic black for interest. It's just trying to get out of there. I'm just gonna, since I want these colors to kind of blend together, I'm just gonna go all over. Silver. I just want this to look like old gray castle like stone walls when all is said and done. Using a little more white than the silver and black because black's going to be my swipe color, so this white will make a nice gray. Just a teeny tiny bit of blue. And a little tiny bit of green, and I'm actually going to keep that confined to not all over. It's not enough paint to swipe, so come back in. white and some silver. Just going to tilt those a little bit and to cover up the paint. Doesn't matter if you have a little dry hole in there. Won't hurt a thing once you've dragged and swiped across it. It'll look just fine. The trick is just to get color on the canvas. All 
Okay. Now, wipe my little gloves off. And I do think I'm going to use a paper towel, which means I need my spritz. All right. I'm going to use my little spritz bottle. It's just water. I'm going to get enough paper towel for the width. Ugh. What I'm going to do is just give that edge a spritz. And that's what I'm going to lay down in the black that I'm swiping. Now, this black I'm just going to dump kind of right across the top. Let it go over the edge. I don't mind that there's quite a bit of it going onto the table. You can always turn that, peel that up when it dries and use it to touch up the sides. Now, here we go. I'll lay the paper towel down flat in the paint, make sure it catches and then pull. And see what we get. Now I'm going to get my trusty little torch while it's while I'm watching cells open up here. Torch out any air pockets since I had to shake my paints up. There's probably a lot of bubbles in there. Not that it really matters, but sometimes it helps widen up the cells too. Getting. feel like these cells are beautiful, but they're a little smaller than what I want, so I'm probably going to try to stretch them a bit. Move them down that way. I don't want them to be too long. I want them to be more wide, like stones. But come on, maybe that way. Well, that's looking kind of cool. What I'm hoping is to get a lot of that, but I may need to use my palette knife to get some of those cells showing up there a little bit. So let's give that a try. So I like this. This looks like the wall pattern that I'm going for. I wish I had some palette knives that the handle was a little bit deeper on. Sometimes I mess up and drag my knuckles through the paint. Still a lot of paint on there. Probably far more than I needed. mossy and green in there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I'll try to zoom in when I take the camera down and show you the pour. It's starting to look kind of rock wally. Alright, now let's come down. this. I'm going to stretch those cells back out again when I'm done dragging some of this extra paint off. I hate to 
messed that up over there, but it's still, well, it's not that bad on, over there. So that's. And let's get a little tilty action and widen those cells up. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but this is an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Hoping. I think that was kind of the problem with over stirring my black. It has the silicone in it, the dimethicone, is that it makes the cell structure a little smaller. I don't want to really muddy it, but I'm thinking hard about the potentiality of doing another swipe. And I think I'm going to. There's not quite enough white in here. There's a tiny little bit, tiny, tiny little bit of green. Silver. Well, there's a lot of silver in that under layer, so maybe I'll go back to white. I know, I'm just putting more paint on a canvas that I just cleared of too much paint, but there is a method to my madness. doesn't matter if there's no paint up there. I'm going to be painting some sky probably up in there. Anyway, wow. this down here is pretty awesome down underneath the painting. All right, just a tiny bit. I really like this better. This is looking better. Move some of that paint back that way. Back down this way, just stretching those cells out and trying not to make them too long because I want it to look like stone blocks like this is looking really nice. Just pulling some of that out and I'm going to go back the other way and pull some of that out. Pretty cool. I'm going to come back this way. So that stuff at the bottom isn't such long stuff. I'm thinking that looks kind of stony. All right, I'm going to clean myself off. Clean off my poor sad little tool that is drowning. I like to clean as I go so I don't end up with a bunch of dried paint. Over everything. These old reconstituted wipes work great for this. So there you go. If you have flushable wipes in your house and they've gone dry, just put a little water in them and use them to clean your paint tools. All right, I'm going to pause you.
bring you down for a close-up. I used those gloves about six times. There you go. Okay. See, you notice at the top there's a lot of canvas showing through. I'm okay with that because I'm probably going to be painting sky up there above this old stone wall. Lots of viney things will be in these dark shadows. I'll have a window or door in here somewhere, maybe both. See that green just barely coming through? That'll be great places for mossy, viney things. And that silver, not as much blue as I wanted to show up, but maybe as it settles, some of that blue will come forward. If it doesn't, that's what painting is for. Sorry for the glare. My light is causing a glare and my ring light is fighting it. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this wall building experimental video. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more art content. Hit that little bell if you want to be notified when my next videos go up. There are also links below to my art website and my brand new Patreon page where you can offer monthly support and where subscribers get full tutorials on multiple forms of art, including acrylic pouring and embellishing, drawing and other techniques from beginners to advanced. There are also links to my Facebook page and my eBay and Poshmark shops where you can find my pieces for purchase. I hope you have a great day and that you're staying safe.